So it was uh, <clears throat> a great uh, experience to be um, part of an iconic show. Uh, you know, you like to do that as an actor. You know, I got I got to do West Wing, for instance, which was uh, I got to do Seinfeld. And, yeah. and, you know, so often sometimes you don't get to do shows that you really personally like. Uh, you know, it's uh, uh, it's always a tug of war between your own taste and passion and doing a job because sometimes it is simply t- you know, doing a job. Yeah. And, uh, so, yeah. No, yeah, for sure. That makes total sense. And it, I think it's it must have been amazing to get to work on a production with so many amazing people. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, like you said, as an actor, especially to get uh, certain gigs that come through that just keep on giving. And it seems like uh, you've definitely had a, um, a fantastic career as an actor. What's up, everybody? It's the Poorly Edited Podcast. I'm your host, Chandler Davis. My name is Coffee Guy. My name is Patrick Lilly. We're live at L Tri C W X L V D X, and we have a very special guest today, Tony Amendola. You may know from Hollywood. He's an actor. (laughs) (laughs) He was just in a very big video game that we uh, have been covering a lot recently, Jedi Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. And uh, we're very excited to talk to him today. Unfortunately, Josh, who's a big fan, is sick, and he was supposed to host today and and talk to Tony. He's a big fan of uh, Stargate, uh, as as we he has not shut up about since he heard that you were coming on this show, Tony. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're very excited though to get to sit down and and uh, have a little chat. How are you good, doing today? Good. I'm doing pretty well. How about you? You guys uh, are you snowed in there? Or? Fantastic. No, uh, we were a few days ago, yeah. but since has melted, thankfully. Uh, but I think they're calling for more snow soon. Are they? Oh, that might be the word on the street. I was worried. Yeah. That I miss it for one day a year. You know, I grew up in yeah. the Northeast, so for one day a year, I really, honestly, truly miss the snow. Yeah, it, <laughs> it is nice. It must be nice. time or two, it snows, and then yeah. it gets old very quickly. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice and... Until you have to leave the house. And then it's just <laughs> that's awful. right. That's if you have right. any plans. When you're like sitting there by the window with like hot chocolate and everything, and like the sun's like glittering off the snow. You're like, this is beautiful. And then you have to go anywhere and you're like, I'm going to crash my car. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Oh, I remember it all too well. Yeah. <laughs> so, Tony, you were recently a performance actor in Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order as Eno Cordova. Is that right, true? yeah. And That's right. You did. <laughs> a performance actor, yeah, not yeah. even a voice actor yeah. at this point because yeah. of everything. Yeah, mocap, yeah. motion capture. Yeah. So what was that like, playing a character? <laughs> did you know that he was not going to necessarily be physically met in the game? Was that some part of the direction uh, they gave you? Well, uh, no, no, not, not. Uh, I mean, it, you know, it was evident from the, uh, you know, from the scenes mm-hmm. in the script I had that, you know, he was... Uh, sort of uh, hologram or right. call it what you will. Uh, so, but the, you know, the great thing is he, um, you know, no one knows what happened to him. So um, who knows? There could be, uh, you know, the next one can be, you know, the search for, uh, you know, Cordoba, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but you know, the, the, it's great fun. I've done, you know, I've been doing this a long time. So, you know, I did uh, stage work, radio work, um, uh, uh, TV, uh, film, VO, and then to do uh, motion capture is sort of fun because it's new. It's sort of, you know, you feel like a, a child again in many ways, negotiating the uh, suit you have to wear and the <laughs> activity you're asked to do. And, and and even, you know, I think the first one I'm trying to think, I did a, um, a Call of Duty, uh, maybe a couple of Call of Duties ago. <laughs> Excuse <laughs> me. And, um, There's a new one out of those every week, so... <laughs> Absolutely. And, um, you know, how much the technology has changed even mm-hmm. from then. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so it's a treat. You know, I love the variety of it. I have a, a film that, I mean, to give you an idea of sort of how different the world's going to be, you have, you know, Jedi Fall in Order. And then I'm, I'm in a film called The Shoe, which means solitary housing unit, which mm-hmm. is about solitary confinement. You know, so wow. I mean, you wow. can't get. And then, you know, A Willing Grace, which is a, uh, you know, their reboot, 
uh, uh, sort of a half hour sitcom and you know you do a play so it's nice to have um, variety uh, right. so that's you know if I can keep working and and just have interesting projects I think me and probably most actors that would be the goal you know that's awesome yeah no that makes yeah. a lot of sense though to be able to have that variety and and change up the kind of productions you get to work on I'm sure that keeps you on your feet and keeps you sharp as well yeah, absolutely yeah yeah it keeps you sharp keeps you interested mm -hmm. and, you know uh, you know sometimes there can be travel which is you know um I love to travel. I just don't like being a tourist. I don't yeah. like, you know, feeling like, oh, it's Tuesday. I have to see blank, blank, blank. You know, I'd much, yeah. you know, rather be in a town working so that I can say to a camera operator or to another actor, hey, uh, you know, what are the good museums? Or, you know, where should I go eat or what should I see? Yeah. You know, uh, I, I, and, uh, you know, I've been lucky uh, to be able to do that uh, over the years and uh, appreciative for that. So is there a, going into all the different mediums of like acting you've done with all like the motion capture, VO, and like that physical acting, is there like different prep going into those roles? Like uh, you, know, you know, it's more a matter of scale and tools. Obviously, you know, if you're doing VO work, any physical movement except movement that gets you that affects your voice and you, you know, you can express, be more expressive is sort of, uh, any expression in that sense is not really valuable. Uh, whereas if you're doing, um, you know, a physical expression, if you're particularly on stage, you know, which is a, um, a much more democratic sort of thing. And the, what I mean by that is on stage, the audience pull, decides the close up. They decide whether to watch mm. the actress on the right or the actress on the left. Uh, so, I mean, you know, full body theatrical experience on stage is different than, say, if you're playing a judge in, you know, one of the uh, legal dramas. So, you know, you're pretty much from the, uh, you know, from the uh, waist up, you yes. know. Um, <laughs> and, you know, it's also a matter of, of, of how you project a certain truth being quote unquote truthful in a thousand seat theater to the back of the house is very, very different than being in a close up in a feature film. Mm -hmm. So it's all a matter of just like, you, you know, the setup that you guys just did, the voice check, all of those, you have to sort of tune your work to the medium, you know, um, and I mean, that's the best I can do. They're all after the same thing. And they're certainly, you know, in the same genus, but you know, they are, they are somewhat different. That's fascinating. That's a fascinating yeah. way to look at it as well. I think that sums, sums up that very well, that, yeah. that transition between all these mediums as someone who, who has done the full range and, and what that must take to, to do them to the fullest every time. Um, right. So, uh, you know, I have to ask, just just to get this out of the way, I have to ask about your work on Stargate SG One, just for our, just for Josh who can't be here today, and and ask a little thing uh, about uh, being Jaffa Master Braytac in Stargate. What was that like playing a character that also for a show that got such a cult following, also as a result. Well, you know, that was, it was a great gift. You know, that it's very interesting how things happened. I, um, I had just finished the uh, Mask of Zorro. Mm -hmm. So I had been out of town for about four months and came back. And it, uh, I still remember it very vividly. I came back just before the 4th of July. I got the script. Uh, you know, I had the long weekend or the holiday to work on it. And, you know, and you, you just, you know, you go in. And, and what was the most exciting thing about it is that it was in Vancouver, and it, which was a town I had passed through and really, really uh, loved spending time in back in the mid-'80s. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, anything to get back to Vancouver, I thought, oh, this, you know, little did I know, you know, the job would be one of the, you know, great jobs for an actor, which is, the, you know, a job that keeps giving. I ended yeah. up doing 26 episodes and, you know, so uh, it was a whole, and it, you know, I managed to travel quite a bit because of that. It was uh it was a, a big deal. You never know which job is going to, which audition is going to be a big deal, but certainly Stargate for me was a big deal. Uh, you know, it turned out that way. And, 
you know, you're working with people you gradually know. So often as a guest star, it's a very lonely job. You have a main cast. You're going up to do this work. You're out of town as often as not. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, you arrive on the first day, and generally the first couple of days are heavy with you because the other actors, the regulars, have been just coming off another episode. So they, if they can, they load in scenes with the, you know, heavy scenes for the guest star in those first couple of days so the other actors can learn their lines. <laughs> um, <laughs> So not, you know, to to be on a show and, and all of a sudden come up and realize, oh, oh, you know, know, know who everyone is and know the temperature of the set and, and saying, oh, you know, he or she is having a, a you know, a bad season. They're not enjoying, I can tell they're not enjoying themselves. And then come back, you know, coming back, you know, uh, 12 episodes later and say, oh, well, I'm glad that got worked out. You know, so it, it gives you a different um, viewpoint. And also because it was... Uh, sort of contemporary sci-fi. I mean, yeah. it wasn't, you know, Star Trek. It wasn't. Yeah. And it, it really did have a big, big following. And um, also, you know, I got on very well with the uh, with the people, particularly, you know, to me, if, you know, it, it's always interesting, the actor's viewpoint, because, of course, that show had Richard Dean Anderson, mm-hmm. Michael Shanks, Amanda Tapping. But from my character's point of view, it had one person, Chris Judge, who played <laughs> Tilk. That was the only, and from the moment I arrived on set, that was the only thing I was interested in. Everything I did was based on him, you know, was based on my um, relationship to him. So it was so great mm-hmm. to uh, sort of seek him out. Everyone, you know, thinks, so. Oh, I'm there to shake Richard Dean Anderson's hand, who I like, by the way. But <laughs> no, I was just sort of looking for Chris Judge. And, uh, you know, once we got that sorted out, it was sort of like uh, skating for the rest of the, the other episodes. Right. Because uh, I, don't, <clears throat> I don't know if you know the show, but he's uh, just a wonderful, funny... Um, sort of big soul, big intellect sort of guy. And it was, uh, it was fun. And he, you know, he also wrote some of the episodes that included my character, which is very nice of him. And, um, so it was, uh, <clears throat> a great, uh, experience to be, um, part of an iconic show. Uh, you know, you like to do that as an actor. You know, I got, I got to do West Wing, for instance, which was, uh, I got to do Seinfeld. And, yeah. and, you know, so often sometimes you don't get to do shows that you really personally like. Uh, you know, it's, uh, uh, it's always a tug of war between your own taste and passion and doing a job because sometimes it is simply t- you know, doing a job. Yeah. And, uh, so, yeah. No, yeah, for sure. That makes total sense. And I think it's it must have been amazing to get to work on a production with so many amazing people. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, like you said, as an actor, especially to get uh, certain gigs that come through that just keep on giving. And it seems like uh, you've definitely had a, um, a fantastic career as an actor. But I'm kind of interested to know and you kind of mentioned it earlier before we started filming but you were you you attended college and you were was it true that you were on track to actually become a lawyer you were practicing law no 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 it's so funny i I was the first one Mm -hmm. excuse me I'm getting over cold. <laughs> the first one in my family to go to college. Mm-hmm. So, you know, when that happens, of course, you know, the family immediately thinks pre, you know, pre-law or, um, uh, you know, medical school. But that wasn't me. I tried. You know, I took a constitutional law course. Mm-hmm. But that wasn't, you know, really my uh, uh, my path. Uh, and, um, you know, gradually I sort of found acting. Initially, it was very social. Uh, and then only later did it become, you know, a little bit more serious. Hmm. So and you then, were... you know, you have to go out and face the, <laughs> <laughs> you know, face the difficulty of, uh, you know, working in a profession where, you know, 90% of your fellow union members are unemployed every week, at least. <laughs> so, you know, welcome to the club. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. How, how did you walk that path? living in, in rural Pennsylvania or at least going to school there, being unemployed so much, but then eventually landing so many gigs that you were so fortunate to have. Well, I, um, you know, I was in Philadelphia and, um, you know, I finished, you know, three years there and then, uh, you know, like everyone else, I had no job. So I taught for a while. I ended up picking up uh, a little bit of teaching work at Temple 
and at a state school in Connecticut and created a nest egg to move uh, to New York, you know, which is where, you know, I thought my, uh, I should go and my career will be because I was an East Coast sort of guy, mm -hmm. you know, Los Angeles was never really, and film and television for that matter was never, I had nothing against it, but it wasn't what I was aspiring toward. Um, and, uh, you know, the, I could have remained as a teacher. I guess that was the first sort of big, you know, I taught for actually three quarters and was offered, con you know, continuous work, which is always hard to turn down, particularly when there was nothing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, I, I just realized that uh, I hadn't had enough experience to teach, I felt. Okay. I wouldn't. I wouldn't want my instructor to have just come out of school and never, you know, wow. really been in the professional world. Uh, so, I mean, Real I sort quick, of took I my own taste. And, I just yeah. want to thank you for, <laughs> for having that foresight because, I mean, we all either are, like, just finishing up college or have just left college. And, you know, uh, I think we can all say we've had a lot of professors that have had really good, strong impacts on us and we're, we're very talented. But you always have one or two that is clearly just, like, writing it out so for you to have the, the, the like the intelligence to be like well, maybe i'm not ready for this yet and then like humbling yourself for that thank you yeah. um anyway you can yeah continue. yeah that was uh you know i mean and i have taught i have gone back to the university over the years and uh, you know done a residency which is you know i've taught acting and yeah, sometimes awesome. even done performances and that's that's nice you know and i do enjoy teaching but you know at the time it wasn't but, uh, you know, only from New York did I eventually, you know, get on a path that took me uh, to the West Coast for a six-month job at the Oregon Shakespeare Festival, and it turned into, oh, God, you know, uh, I was working directly from that job. I ended up working the next, oh, 14, 15 years. I can trace the people I met. And then it was only then that I came down to L.A., you know, really seriously in the early 90s. I had come down sporadically, you know, starting in the late 80s, but starting the early 90s, that's when I really sort of moved down. Uh, you know, the theater world was changing in terms of, you know, I was used to a company aesthetic where there's, you know, 12 actors or 15 actors who do a series of play over a season, and yeah. it was going more to a job in, and, uh, you know, so I thought it was time. Okay, you know, this is a maybe a time to uh, to go to go try to go and you know because it's always in the back of your mind if you're an actor too if you if if you if you're a theater actor you always thought oh god I, I wish I had tried to do a little bit more film and television and if you're a television film actor you always think oh I never got to do the theater yeah. I see it from both ends yeah. uh, so um, and it uh, you know I'm very happy I did uh, but uh, but I still do plays I just did um a production of Amadeus down in San Diego, and I'll be doing probably another one in the spring somewhere. That's awesome. So yeah. When you, so when you so you decided teaching wasn't right for you at that moment. What when did you decide that it was like the right time to make the leap and just like go after acting? <laughs> well, immediately. I mean, I was out of school. I worked at a film archives. You know, I taught. You know, got my nest egg and. And jumped into New York, and you know, uh, you know, so much, of it, so much of it is luck. Uh, <laughs> you know, you do have to be prepared. Don't mm -hmm. get me wrong; you have to be uh, work on your skills. But the fact that uh, you know, from this job, six month job in Ashland, I met. Uh, it turned into another year. They offered me another contract, and then they said, "Well, you know, you really should go off now, and and then come back to us when you uh, s s sort out your union affiliations." And then, you know, ended up meeting a guy who was running a theater in Berkeley, who said, um, "You know, I want you to come and join the company." And paused, and then said, "I'd like you to." consider a five-year commitment. Well, as an actor, I just sort of laughed, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. thinking, no, you know, and he said, no, 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 no. He says, I understand. If we don't like working with each other or, you, you know, then you walk away. But I just want to know you're serious. I, I was there 10 years. Wow. I mean, it was, uh, uh, you know, and I mean, I, I won't say, uh, uh that anyone got wealthy, <laughs> but, uh, but we got wealthy in other ways, which is that we were doing, you know, six, eight plays a year, and we were doing things that were very right for us and other things that perhaps in a more commercial world we wouldn't have been doing, but it's it's great for an actor to have that mm -hmm. ch 
challenge, you know. So, and uh, you know, and then you know, you go to L.A. and I wasn't because I was quote unquote more of a character guy. Uh, youth wasn't calling me to L.A. I wasn't, you know. Sometimes young actors and actresses, you know, it's important for them to be there. They, you know, their beauty and their mm-hmm. uh, or their attractiveness is so much a part of what's going to open doors for them, mm-hmm. you know. So they can show their talent. But for me, it wasn't that, you know. So I was able to. Uh, to work for uh, 15 years, 14 years, and then come to L.A. So I, I had a resume. I had some, you know, decent credits. So, and, I, you know, I wasn't treated like the new kid on the block. So yeah. I was lucky. That's interesting. You were able to come into the fold and already have some some respect there uh, instead of, you know, starting from, from the bottom. Is that a path that you yeah. recommend to more actors trying to make it? Or like- no, it's an individual thing, you know. You know, the actor's path is very, there are, you know, it's the William Goldman thing. You know, nobody knows anything, mm-hmm. really, <laughs> truly. I mean, everyone, everyone's got their own journey. You know, the only thing I tell people, uh, young actors, you know, who I'll always talk to, they're either friends of friends mm-hmm. or, you know, friends of a relative, and they come to L.A., I always, you know, will have a cup of coffee or something with them. I, I, you know, I, I just tell them that, you know, Basically, most people don't understand what an actors do. They they only understand two things about actors: starving and star. They don't understand what is quote unquote a, a blue collar or a working actor. Mm-hmm. And yet, you you know, it's what happens when all of a sudden there's a a new face, and particularly if they're a little older. And then when you're watching television, you say, "Oh, look, that's so and so," you know, because everyone starts somewhere. Everyone uh, and you know, that's when um, those are the actors I admire, the actors that, uh, you know, had longevity. You know? mm. That makes sense. Yeah, no, I, I see what you're saying there about being, maybe not, I don't know if uh, okay sounds like it's uh, you're settling, but it's not. Like be, being in a position where you're confident to to not have to vie for the biggest stardom, but be happy to be doing something you love consistently and and, and not starving. You know, having that in-between where it's not oh, yeah, those two don't, polar yeah, don't, opposite. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. I mean, if, <laughs> you know, everyone on some you, you don't come to LA unless on some level you're willing to accept uh, you know fame and celebrity yeah. if it comes your way I'm yeah. not I'm not being humble in any in it I think that's <laughs> disingenuous yeah. but what I'm saying is that sometimes actors can be made less because they're they're not it, it would be like saying to a lawyer right mm-hmm. which is a respected profession right mm-hmm. It would be saying to a lawyer that you're a failure unless you've unless you have argued a court uh, a case before the Supreme Court. You are a failure because that's what you're saying to an actor. Unless you've been a star in a big movie, right? You you know what I mean. And, and all wrong. I'm suggesting is is you, you got to anyone any actor who has supported themselves for uh, a number of years is in the top three percent. Mm. Right there. You know what I mean? It's so, already hard to obtain. Oh, yeah. incredibly hard to obtain. And that's, and that's why you, you, you sort of have to, you have to want it. You have to, um, and it, it's sort of strange. You have to want it. And yes, you have to, you can only be validated by, I used to have a teacher who says you have to be able to stamp your own passport. <laughs> you, you have to be able to, you know, judge the work. You can't just simply, uh, otherwise, it's you know you're constantly at the mercy of uh, someone else's taste. <laughs> you know right. what I mean? You know, and that's you know. So you have to. It's a it's a it's a sort of tricky thing mentally uh, uh, for an actor, and that's why you know, for instance, you know, you you can get into this film and television thing, and all of a sudden it's not working. You need to go off and do a play. Mm-hmm. The reason you need to go off and do a play is, as an actor, you have much more control in a play. You're playing the symphony from the beginning to the end on a given night on a given at a given time. No one that you play that. I mean, you know, whereas in a film, of course, you know, you can do great work, and for some technical reason, it won't even be in the yeah. film or the episode. You know, or, yeah. uh, you know, I remember doing a uh, 
uh, is sitting on set with a producer, and a, one of the regular actors came over and had a hush hush sort of conversation. And for some reason, I don't know, the producer sort of was talkative, and he sort of liked me. He says, You actors are crazy. I said, Well, what do you mean? He said, This guy's got a steady job. He's been on the show for three years. He's doing very well. And he comes up to me. He's ju- he just shot a show. He just shot an episode with James Earl Jones. Yeah. Wow. And what his concern was to be certain he had 50 50 coverage. <laughs> you know? Oh, and uh, 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 I told him, of course. Now, I pay James Earl Jones a blank blah amount of money. So clearly, he's going to get all the coverage and not going to be this actor. <laughs> you know? Uh, <clears throat> that's the business. Whereas. You know, getting back to, <laughs> to what I said earlier, if you're on, if I'm on stage or, or or a young actress is on stage with James Earl Jones, they the audience gets to decide in that moment who they watch. Now, more than likely to watch probably watch James Earl Jones, <laughs> but if but if he's not up to it, yeah, if I'm that guy, he's not up to it. The audience, it's sort of like switching channels. They're switching. Oh, okay, she's you know she's what interests you, and mm. and, and so. But basically, it's um, it's the ability to create your own rhythm <coughs> and be more of a part of the process that draws actors back to the theater. It, it's empowering, and also, it's a, there's like a direct lineage. Very few professions can trace their lineage back 2,500 years, which is which you can if you're a stage actor. Wow, wow. You know what I mean? So I've also heard that on. For theater, it's a lot more. You get to refine your role a lot more in your character, and like you get better so every often. time, yeah. as opposed to like TV yeah. or film where you like you prep for the one day of shooting and then it's done, and then you can't go back and change it unless it was that awful. Right, mm-hmm. that's that's, that's, that's very very true. And the danger on stage, of course, is that you know you can be asked to if you're on a Broadway show, you're doing it eight times a week for three years. You know, creates its own problems. But you're right. The, <laughs> The thing is much more, you've rehearsed, first of all, you've had four weeks to rehearse, if you're lucky, but, uh, and it means you can refine, there can be growth. Film and television, you know, there's something, particularly in television, something called typecasting, mm-hmm. because there's, you may be shoot. I, I have auditioned for things where I shot the next day. They're, they're not interested in whether you will develop this character. You have to bring it to the audition. They're not, you know, they're not quote unquote readings, they're actings. Anyone who tells you it's a reading in film and television is crazy. You know, it's, it, that's simply not the way it works. Mm. Um, it, it happens. And so consequently you have to be disciplined and, and, you know, really work on your script. The door. What's that? And you have to leave some of, some of maybe the ego at the door. for. Oh that yeah. Kind of yeah. Yeah. If you can, you know, it's yeah. funny. You, yeah. Yeah. It's re- and you have to enjoy it, you know. If you can, it's f- it's very hard auditioning, you know. <laughs> but you have if there's some actors who really, really enjoy it. I had a friend who said, "Yeah, you know, you know, I had a little success. I was working, and that ch- changed. And all of a sudden, you know, I had all these buddies I used to go golfing with, and I had an audition. And they said to me, you have to audition.' Mm. And he looked at them and said, "Hey." I acted today. What the hell did you do? Yeah. You know, you played you played golf. You know, what I mean? <laughs> so it's a it's a, it's interesting. And it's also you know it's a long game. It's not um, it's not a horse race. Mm-hmm. You know, so sometimes the first people through the door aren't necessarily the people that are going to be there in thirty years. Wow, I think this is a pretty good uh, other side of the coin to what most people hear about Hollywood, where it's like. Like someone famous gets a role like six months ahead of time and they like method act the entire time to really develop their character. But I think this is like, I think this is much, is a, this is a very realistic look at Hollywood as opposed yeah. to that. Right. Yeah, it's true. You know, if you can get, get it six, I mean, I have great, there are two actors I have, uh, there are many, but the mm-hmm. two in particular came to mind when you were talking. One is, of course, is Daniel Day Lewis. Yes. Of course, yeah. And the other one is Christian Bale. Yes. Oh, yeah. You know, these are major, major all-in type actors. Mm-hmm. All in, you know what I mean? And they use as much time. Now, again, if you're allowed that opportunity, then that is fantastic. But you have to realize 99.9999999 are not. You know, you are not going to get that time. Yeah, you aren't exactly. going to find out six months ahead. 
you 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 aren't going to be pay given trainers to change your body. <laughs> you aren't. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's a different. Um, that's a very rarefied world. I mean, you know, another I think uh, terrific actress is um, Michelle Williams. You mm-hmm. know, in terms of going in. Uh, you know, so there's there's a you know as well as the you know the stories about De Niro and uh, um, you know Dustin Hoffman, all those guys. Wow. Well, honestly, you know, in hearing you uh, kind of go through your process and how you've felt doing this work for so long, and both as a active participant and a bystander to, uh, you know, the industry and and this trade. Um, I think it's very enlightening to hear your perspective on things. And because what I hear is not something that is only applicable to an actor. I mean, you know, you're talking about taking pride in your work and being confident in yourself and your work and, you know, the, the amount of time it takes to, to, develop these skills and to chip away at that like um i think it's uh it's a fantastic perspective that you've given and i think any aspiring actor or just aspiring to anything can can learn from honestly yeah you know i i think as you said i think you know the same advice can apply to any uh any artisan in mm-hmm. the kind of way you know it's so funny um uh, everybody's got a different view of sort of what the actor or the performer does. I've never been one who's been big on the actor, quote unquote, as artist. My reason for that is I think what the actor does, if they're lucky on a given night, whether it be on the screen or on the stage, art can be created, but it's not a given. Mm-hmm. It's not a given. And I think it's much healthier for the actor to think of themselves as an artisan building something that yeah. then can be, you know, elevated to quote unquote art than they are thinking, going in saying, Oh, I am an artist. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I, I, I just don't see that unless you're, unless you're writing it and doing the whole shebang by yourself. It's, it's much more collaborative than that. that might my, be a, but that's my personal opinion. You know, everybody's different about that. That might be a really good perspective to have. So you don't think you should have like half the screen time as, I don't know, James. Yeah. Or... Yes. <laughs> that yeah, there you go. Little, that, yeah. That'll, that'll help you. And yeah. <laughs> and you might want to think about the bigger picture of why James Earl Jones is what he is and why he's getting that screen time might have something, you know, right. <laughs> Yeah, you might want to look at what he's doing to earn half the screen time. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's fantastic. Well, for, uh, we'd love to talk all day, but unfortunately, we have to wrap up. I think. Uh, is there anyone, anything you want to shout out before we go? No, uh, I, I thank you for reaching out, and uh, it's um, I'm always pleased to uh, uh, to talk to people who are creating their own, you know, podcasts and <laughs> other other things. And uh, and good luck to you all. And uh, next time. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much for taking some time out of your day. You got it. Take care. Yeah. All the best. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.